Is it true that um, your soul chooses a place to be born and you have to fulfill a certain purpose on that location? No, no it's not. Um, I'll tell you, that's the new age philosophy. And uh, it all sounds all good that you chose it, um, but the reality is um, there are many, many factors that determine where you're actually born on Earth. And those factors have a lot to do with your personality and nature and the needs of the society in which you're born into. And what, what that, what, from God's perspective, those, the, how that society is going to become more loving. So God's intention is that where you're born, you would, if you were you tr your true self, you would aid that location to grow more in love towards a, you know, some kind of development in love. But unfortunately, what happens is the imposition of society, family, education and other things play a role in destroying that uh, pure intention that would normally be there in your soul. Um, and when I say intention, you are a blank soul when you arrive. And what I mean by that is that you are a person with a nature and a personality, but you don't know who you are. You haven't learnt about yourself yet. So the, so the process of what we would call incarnating, so the very first time a person comes to earth, is really the process of a soul splitting into two separate parts and one part of the soul goes to, is attracted to a body created for it, a spirit body and a material body that are both created at the time of conception. So, you know, with the union between the sperm and an egg cell, what actually happens there is there's two bodies getting created, not one. And both bodies are getting created at the same time. Both bodies have a genetic structure and both bodies, the spiritual body is made of spiritual material that the, you can't actually see. It's actually in a different dimensional space. And then there's a physical body which is created in the physical space. And those two bodies, your half of the soul is now attached to. So if I'm male um, I'm uh, and have masculine uh, traits and tendencies, I will be attracted to a male body. And at this stage, my half of the soul isn't... Before this occurs, I'm not an individual. I don't know who I am. I haven't become self-aware yet. But in this process, the very process of incarnating, which happens soon after conception, like within a day of conception, this process occurs, and now I'm beginning the process of becoming self-aware. Right? Now, the problem is, and it's not a problem because God designed it to be the proper way of, happening, of things happening, is that I've got to learn a lot of things. And it's not practical for me to learn everything all at once. It's impossible for somebody to learn everything all at once uh, as soon as they incarnate. So what, what God has designed is a process of gradual growth, some of which is forced upon you. And when I say it's forced upon you, you you're a little baby first and then... You know, two years later, you're a toddler, and two, two years later or three years later, you're going off to school potentially, and for, you know, six or seven years later, you're, you've got uh, your full development of your brain, and so you're able to assimilate and make decisions and so forth. And then during your puberty years, you're developing sexually as well, so you now, you now start connecting to things like ideas and concepts like romance and, and, and desire and passion and love and all of these kind of things. And then once you into sort of adult maturity, then you start connecting the ideas like having a family. And these things are all meant to challenge you. Well, not so much challenge you, but help you grow as a person in love. That's why God designed it that way. So, so your physical body is your very first port of call. It, it's your very first interface the soul, your half of the soul, remember there's this other half that also has to go through a process too, a similar sort of process where it will be attracted to a body, right? And it will have a spirit body and a physical body created for it as well. And both halves are going through this process. So let's say that half is more attracted to the female and so it's going to be attracted to a female body. And, and so now you've got one half of you, of your soul, your whole soul is one soul, but half of it is you. 
Half of it is each of you as individuals. And that half is in a process of discovery of its half self. But also, at some point, it's got to have to, going to have to, be in a process of discovery of its whole self. In other words, discovery of its other half as well. At some point, it's going to have to do that as well. God designed it that way. Now, now for the majority of people on earth, there's hardly any awareness of that at all. Right? And in fact, there's this whole concept that it doesn't, there's no half of yourself, you're just you, and, and you're an individual, and you've got to make your way in the world as an individual and so forth. That's the general philosophy here on earth, and that philosophy on earth has been here a long time with some exceptions. And when I say some exceptions, there's been some spiritual people in the past who haven't heard about God's love or God's truth. Uh, this was way before that was on offer. And they discovered they were half of a soul. So Socrates and Plato were two of those kind of people. Who, they recognised that, ah, oh, there's more to me than just what I think I am, but there's this other half of me that I could feel some sort of connection to. And, and they started to recognise they did have another half, a connected half. Uh, somewhere else in the world, and they didn't know, of course, at that time how to discover that person or how to find them or you know, what, what kind of things in the soul, what kind of abilities or attributes of the soul would cause an attraction. But they, they did understand they were there <clears throat> because they could feel, feel them. So in history, it's been rare for a person to feel that way. Most people sort of feel quite insular and self-aware self, uh, in the sense of, of their half. When I say self-aware, they're aware that they themselves are a conscious thinking being, able to make choices, able to make decisions, able to live harmoniously or disharmoniously with its environment. They're able to make decisions and choices that affect the rest of their life. They're able to determine a future. So that they recognise that this is way beyond what an animal is capable of doing. Right? So we know we're not animals in the sense that we, our soul isn't the animal. Because this soul is capable of this self-awareness that the animal body is not capable of having. So you could say the human form is really an animal body, but, but there's something inside of it, the real part of you, that is way beyond an animal in terms of its capacity and its understanding and its abilities. So this is sort of the structure, of you could say, of you. Now, you are one half. So... If you're in a male body, then you, you, you're a half. Your half is masculinely inclined. And if you're in a female body, then your half is femininely inclined. Right? That's how it works. And that is uh, determined by the attractions based upon the half of the soul at the time of incarnation. 